Hi, I'm Sham, Product Manager at NetData. We'd like to show you a quick sneak preview of NetData's new Anomaly Advisor. With this new feature, NetData identifies anomalies automatically and lets you explore them in real time. We do this using thousands of unsupervised machine learning models running at the edge with minimal resource usage, all with the single goal of making troubleshooting easier for you. What you're about to see is Costa, CEO and founder of NetData using Anomaly Advisor for the very first time. I'll let Costa take it from here. I am gonna show to you how we found with uh, NetData Anomaly Advisor a bug in the Raspbian distribution where just by uh, sending data to DevNull to destroying data, you're actually increasing the CPU utilization, you lose half a core. Well, I have four RPIs here. There is uh, this NetData People Space and NetData at Placa, a war room. In this war room, I have four RPIs. So let's go, let's see the nodes. These are the four RPIs. These are credit card sized computers. The idea is that they are, we are, we are running a test on them, on them. So RPI 1 is a client. We are doing a benchmark, let's say. RPI 1 is a client. It runs HTTP perf. This is the client that generates uh, HTTP requests. On RPI 2, we have a, a load balancer. So you can see here, for example, we are passing the log file of Nginx. It serves about 5,000 requests per second. Uh, quite good for uh, such a weak machine. And actually, it, it is only, uh, as you see, 40% to 50% uh, utilize the CPU. On 3 and 4, we have two backend servers. So here we have uh, each of them is serving about 2,500 requests per second. Now, this is a steady thing. Uh, it runs all the time. The client, this HTTP perf client, is uh, restarted. So it finishes and then restarts again. And actually, to measure that, to see when, when it restarts, we created a statsd chart where uh, we just send, we increment a counter every time this command is being restarted. So it's in an, inf in an infinite loop with just a statsd command with a netcat that we send to the data. Similarly, for the uh, web servers, uh, we have, okay, the web server and we monitor also Nginx and the likes, you know, whatever we can monitor there. But we also have a statsd. What's the problem there in the web servers? The problem is that these RPIs uh, having their little disks full, it's a, uh, they are SD cards, 32 gigabytes, even a day of logs couldn't, couldn't uh, fit. So what we did, we mounted um, varlog nginx as tmpfs, and we have a cron job that rotates the log file every uh, 10 minutes. And every 10 minutes that it's being rotated, we also send a stats the uh, log rotation event to each of them. So the load balancer does this, uh, the first web server does this, and the second web server does this. We are going to use uh, uh, the, the test that we did and how we found it is that, okay, we said this is stable. Eh? So on Anomaly Advisor, everything is stable. Well, there are a few things here and there, but nothing happens. So I have two SSH sessions here. Both of them are on the first RPI, the, the client. And what I wanted to do is just say, consume a lot of CPU. So this is uh, a, an infinite loop, while true, echo to dev null, something, nothing, a space. A, a new line, actually, it echoes to dev null and repeats. So once I press this, immediately, I see on the anomaly advisor, that anomalies are going to be triggered. Oh, it learned. <laughs> it learned. The f thing learned no anomalies. It learned. <laughs> so, 
of course it learned it's machine learning this is what it does it learns so we're gonna do it on the one of the other uh, rpis that have not learned this situation yet so i stop this i log out i go to let's go to four uh, i go to four uh, i am logging in okay i'm gonna log in also here not there four so now it will be done on four so i clear the screen uh, i have a top running here just for us to see and i am doing exactly the same infinite loop what is happening here something changed let it settle a bit just that i logged in eh? i logged in to rpi4 and immediately triggered anomalies immediately but anyway, that's not the problem yet uh, that I we want to show you. So this works just by logging in. Uh, uh, I, uh, I created anomalies. So I am doing the same loop. So while true, do echo to dev null, done. Okay, simply think, infinitely echo something to dev null. So I am pressing that and back to the data. Now, RPI4 should be triggering anomalies because this is something that has not happened in the past. So the first spike that we see here comes from just the SSH session that I logged in. And actually also one has, huh? One, once I logged out, also one uh, got a few uh, spikes there. So this is now anomalies that are triggered because I am running this infinite loop. We will wait for a moment. And now I'm going to highlight this area. I'm going to stop it. No, first stop it. Let's stop that thing. And let's wait for uh, anomalies to settle down. And here we are. Everything back to normal. I am going to highlight this area. Oops, I zoomed, sorry. Let's zoom out again. Let's highlight this area. Okay. Now, the anomaly advisor uh, what, what we see in the anomaly advisor, I didn't walk you through here. So the first is the number of anomalous metrics that we found that uh, were detected. The second is the anomaly rate that was detected. And the third is the node level anomalies that we detected. Now, by highlighting the area that we are interested, we can take a breakdown of the metrics, a sorted list of the metrics that were found anomalous. So, of course, the first is SSH. So my SSH, SSH session did the whole thing. The second, however, once let's go a little bit below, what was interesting, what is interesting is this. X server, the X server, and it has system CPU, CPU, logical reads. Interesting. So, if I expand this, I do have some serious stuff here on four. Eh? These are on one from the previous sessions, four. Now, I want to find out what the, these are. Eh? Who, what is triggering this? The interesting thing is, and this is how we found the bug, we were concerned about how is it possible X to be triggered because we had an infinite loop sending new lines to dev null. So I, we repeat that thing and we see that there is a process here called pipe wire metadata. Now, in order to find out the exact process, we use top. 
Metadata cannot do it yet. The whole point is that when you see everything that is apps, start with apps, we should have the ability for users to see the exact list of the processes as displayed by talk, but, do, but we don't have it yet. So currently, the only way is to open a terminal and open top. Now you see Pipewire Media. Pipewire Media somehow Metadata detected this as X. So to find out what happened, we're doing we are asking for a, a, a tree of a, a process tree of what is currently running. What we see here is that pipe wire media session is part is the same in the same process tree as uh, system D user and just by by editing the apps groups plugin uh, config open a data etc data edit config apps groups sorry groups.conf and going to uh, X not this X this X you will see that there are really a lot of stuff that are matched as X one of them is this system the user so the data found that this process tree the process tree this process tree generated a lot of uh, CPU just because we are sending stuff to dev null. So clear, we can do it again. Boom. And we will have here pipe wire media. So now let's create an infinite loop without dev null. So just a CPU thing, no IO at all. This is bus, so we can do this. A colon means do nothing, just loop again. So in this case, if we press it, now the X is done. The pipe wire media server is not there. And if we play that, you will see that currently it's not. But if we go again and run the above with a dev null, in a data, we will see that this is increasing. So what we concluded is that in the Raspbian distribution, there is a severe bug. When you send data to dev null, then a process called pipe wire media session gets half a core in, uh, in this weak device. Thank you. That's all. Machine learning in action. It worked. I hope that gave you a little taste of how easy it is to troubleshoot using net data. If you'd like to learn more about Anomaly Advisor, or you'd like to see more of these use case walkthroughs, or if you have your own use case walkthrough that you would like to share with the net data community, please head on over to the net data community channels and reach out to us. Thank you for watching. Happy troubleshooting.